This is in continuation of one of the previous videos where we looked at configuring QS in Cisco SD-WAN. You can check the previous video in the link shown above. In this video, we will further expand the QS by configuring per tunnel QS. Per tunnel QS provides the capability of regulating traffic from the hub towards the spokes at a per spoke level. Since the bandwidth of the hub is higher than the spokes, configuring per tunnel QS ensures it cannot send excessive traffic to a small spoke with lesser bandwidth and overrun it. Attached is the topology we will use for this demo. We have the same three class QoS that we configured in the earlier video where we match traffic with TSCP bit EF to the priority queue that is Q0 and limit it to 10% of the bandwidth. Traffic with DSCP bit AF41 is mapped to Q1, an allocated bandwidth of 30%, and finally all the remaining traffic is mapped to Q2 and allocated 60% of the bandwidth. The bandwidth of the hub is 200 Mbps, while spoke 1 bandwidth is 20 Mbps and spoke 2 bandwidth is 50 Mbps. These spokes will advertise the downstream bandwidth dynamically, and the hub will shape it accordingly for the traffic towards the spoke. Within this parent shaper, the three class based QS that we have configured will provide the necessary priority to the application traffic as defined in a hierarchical manner. So let's begin. Let's first check the available bandwidth towards the spoke. Let's send traffic towards spoke 1. And we can see that we are, we are getting a bandwidth of 200 Mbps towards the spoke. Let's try to see what's the bandwidth that we get in the reverse direction from the spoke towards the hub. And we can see that the bandwidth from the spoke towards the hub is shaped at 20 Mbps, which is the bandwidth of the spoke 1. Similarly, let's check the bandwidth towards spoke 2. And here again, we can see that the bandwidth from the hub to the spoke is about 200 Mbps. And let's try the bandwidth in the reverse direction. And we can see that the, we get a bandwidth about 50 Mbps, which is the bandwidth at spoke 2. So let's go to templates. Let's go to feature templates. Let's go to the interface template, the hub. Let's go to the tunnel. And here, let's turn on Pertinal QS. Once we turn on, we get the Pertinal aggregator. Since this is a hub, it's an aggregator, so we'll turn it on. And we'll then turn the tunnel percentage bandwidth to about 80% of the bandwidth. This is for the overlay traffic. If you go to the QS section, you'll find that the shaping rate configured at the device is 200 Mbps. Let's click update. Let's quickly check the configuration. And there you see it's getting configured as hub. Let's click configure. Let's go back to templates. Now edit the spoke template. So let's go back to the feature template. And let's edit the interface template attached to the spokes. Let's click tunnel and turn on Pertinal QS. We will not turn on the aggregator role because this is a spoke. Let's click QS and here we mention the egress shaping rate uh, when we push the templates. Let's go back to tunnel and define our downstream bandwidth. So this is the bandwidth that will be advertised by the spoke towards the hub so that the hub can then shape it to the configured bandwidth. Let's give it a friendly name. Update. So this is spoke one. So the the bandwidth of the spoke is twenty Mbps. And 
and for spoke 2 bandwidth is 50 mbps so these are the bandwidth that will be advertised by the spoke towards the hub let's click next let's quickly check our configuration so it's configured as spoke and it also has a downstream bandwidth parameter Let's go back to our Ubuntu machine and check the bandwidth again. Let's check the bandwidth towards spoke 1. And now you can see that the bandwidth from the hub towards the spoke is about 20 Mbps. So let's also send some traffic on DSCP bit EF46. And you can see within the tunnel we are getting about 2 Mbps, which is 10% of the bandwidth that we allocated to priority queue. Let's try sending some traffic on AF41 088. Now you can see you can you get about 30% of the bandwidth, uh, which is about 6 Mbps, and correspondingly you'll see a decrease in the bandwidth uh, in the default queue as well. So let's also check this towards spoke 2. Now you can see the bandwidth from the hub towards the spoke is about 50 Mbps because that's the bandwidth that is getting advertised by the spoke towards the hub. Let's send the traffic continuously. And now send some traffic with the DSCP bit set for EF46. And you can see you get about 6 Mbps, which is 10% of the bandwidth allocated to the link. And now let's try sending some traffic on AF41. And you see that you get about 30% of the bandwidth allocated to it, and a corresponding amount of bandwidth gets reduced from the default queue. And once the traffic stops, the default queue is able to take up all the available bandwidth across all the other queues. Thus, Hot Tunnel QS lets you apply a quality of service policy on individual tunnels, ensuring that branch offices with smaller throughput are not overwhelmed by larger aggregation sites. That's it for this demo, and thanks for watching.